Hello, everyone. Welcome to my review of Squid Game! Okay, so, hello, and welcome to the actual part of the video. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be going over Squid Game, and why it's so good in my review of it, you know. But, yeah, I've already brought up what I think about Squid Game. But, you know, we gotta think, bring up why I think this about Squid Game. And everything, like, that people brought up of, uh, like, reviews and stuff like that. Such as on, like, things on Rotten Tomatoes, stuff like that. Everything about Squid Game. But, before we get into the video, I have to bring up that there will be spoilers in this video. And if you haven't already watched Squid Game, uh, or you're looking to watch it, then definitely just go watch it before you watch this. But... Yeah, if you've already watched it, or you don't plan on it, or you just want to proceed, then just, yeah, you can proceed. But, yeah. Also, what I ha- I cannot really show many clips from the video, because I'm not sure about spoilers and stuff like- Well, like, I mean, not spoilers. Uh, yeah, stuff like copyright, and- which I'm not sure where that stands on, and also gore, which I'm not an experienced editor, uh, maybe in future vi videos I'll be able to show more clips, but right now I'm not that good at removing things and I might mess up, mess up and show something I can't show on YouTube. So we're not going to be taking many chances with that and I'm going to be showing minimal stuff, but there will still be things that I will show to like reinforce a point I make or like just to show you guys some evidence. Of uh, something I'm saying. But yeah. We're not going to be showing many clips. So yeah. Definitely go watch it before you watch this. And it definitely also brings you to a rabbit hole of other shows. Like Alice in Borderland. As well as um, uh, As the Gods Will. Um, these shows are also really good. Well As the Gods Will is a movie. But yeah, these shows, those shows are good as heck, and they're fun to watch. I've binged, I have been binging those shows a lot, because I really love Squid Game, Alice in Borderland, those ones. But we're going to be focusing on Squid Game today. But yeah, and you know what I mean. We just gotta, first, we gotta go over a few things that happen in Squid Game. So, what happens in the first episode is you're brought up to show a man who's obviously struggling in life. And he is definitely poor, if that's how I could say it, you know. He's down in the dumps. He doesn't have much money, and he's in a lot of debt. But he is extremely he lucky that day. As he goes out, he bets his the last of his life savings on a horse race. And he wins. He wins 4 million won. And if you want to go see the like I will show I'll bring up a con like a thing where that shows like the conversion I I don't know the word. <laughs> Sorry. Like it, but like US or Australian money to one now and yeah it's definitely um, a bit tiny but still uh, it's a lot since it's four million uh, let's see exactly how much and still uh, four million it's only around 4,667. I brought out the translation up on your screen, the conversion. But yeah, the conversion up on the screen. So yeah, you guys should be able to see it. And it's a little bit... Well, you know, it's for someone who is in serious debt. Yeah, that's a lot of money. But for someone who is pretty uh, rich, nah, 4,600 not that much but yeah it's that we're not dealing with someone who uh, like we're not dealing with someone who is rich we're dealing with someone who is badly in debt so that for that I mean four million that's a lot of money and he's going to be able to use it to get his family some 
include his be able to eat well and be able to have like be able to actually get her, his daughter a present uh well something well he was gonna try and get a something present and but yeah he en ends up out going like when he's leaving it he sees some loan sharks and these are the people that are going for his money after a year because he's in debt so these guys he probably took a loan out from them and now they're after them because he's not he hasn't paid back his loan and yeah that means he's in trouble so he starts running away with because he's got that money and that he wants to spend on getting his daughter a little gift but yeah they catch him in the bat in the bathroom after he runs into a woman who like will soon we will soon have to revisit and this woman that he meets like that he runs into the yeah it's just she is an important character later in the series unknowingly as he bumps into that woman uh, she picks box put pickpockets him and steals that money so as he gets trapped by the loan sharks uh he and tries like they try to force him out of his money and uh, but when he does actually try to take it out so that he doesn't get his tongue cut off uh he ends up realizing it's gone why is it gone he remembers that pickpocket and uh, well that woman he bumped into and yeah uh, what who he realizes now to be a pickpocket and uh he eventually has to sign a contract with his own blood and this means he needs to pay or else he's going to die and uh, that's bad because he's going to die and this means yeah he's going to die <laughs> so yeah uh he has to pay up soon and he's looking for a way to make money he's got lost that he lost that four million he just that he just made and he was going to try and find for his uh, he was going to try and buy a gift for his daughter and uh, we won't get into the uh well we won't get into everything that happens in the show we'll try to keep it to the bare minimum so yeah he eventually after do a few other scenes he uh event like he needs to get money because his daughter is moving away and he needs uh and if he doesn't get money he can eventually maybe take custody of her and he wants that he want well he wants to visit and her or have a stable life because without a stable life he's never going to get to see or be with a, a, his daughter anymore and that's bad because imagine being a dad and never getting to see your uh, lovely little daughter ever again and yeah that's scary so yeah he wants to meet her again so he does what any guy would do and tries is well he's really desperate so when he's sitting in a train station well a subway and a guy comes up and asks for a game he's definitely to play a game with him he's on edge and he doesn't want to do any so like business gimmicks he's poor all of that but when that o guy opens up a briefcase showing hundreds of thousands of won he gets a little bit interested so yeah they play a game where they play dachi which is a game where you have to throw two well where there's one piece of paper and then you try to throw a pe the other piece of paper on top of it to make it like uh well just flip over and there is actually strategy to this game where you gotta get the most surface area onto the thing it's not about how hard you hit it but he does not know this because yeah he's just a normal person yeah he's not a professional dachi player and yeah i learned this for like just doing a little bit of research and uh, yeah so what he does is he just starts failing and the bet was, which I didn't bring this up earlier, that um, he would pay him $100,000 for every time he wins. Um, well, not $100,000, 100000 won for every time that um, uh, here, Giyang, I don't know, I, I sorry if I didn't pronounce that right, uh, Giyang, 
uh, like every time he wins, he gets a hundred thousand won. But every time that the other guy wins, he gets a hundred thousand won. And uh, yeah, the fact that he gets like uh, this is a bet that he cannot pass up because he is want he wants like even the scraps of money, like he needs money, and because well he's poor. And he's going to do it regardless to the fact that he can't actually pay it. He's going to be doing a bet that he can't pay, like, the amount of money that they are going to be going, that they want, that he wants if he loses. And, but he inevitably loses. And, uh, instead of making the uh, hero pay 100k, he is a little bit nice and says yeah d how about instead of that you pay me then let's just sign over your bodily rights and let's you know, every time you lose lose i'll pay i'll like slap you just give him a little slap and yeah he accepts like because a slap in the like if you were given the chance to get a slap just slapped for money and you could make win some money uh just get slapped that's nothing like i even i who has money i'd accept that because slaps not that bad but yeah slaps are actually really pain are actually really really painful and uh it depends yeah but yeah it's really good deal and one that he just can't pass up. So, what he does is just signs it over. And he just gets starts getting slapped a ton. And eventually, when he wins, his emotional takes over a little bit. And gets hit. He tries to slap the guy. But then he gets his 100k. But here is where the actual story starts. This part is when he gets given a little card it's got a few shapes on it and this is not doesn't it's a little bit sus it is and it's a business card and you know, what he uh, it's he's told if you want to make more money call me and yeah he first at first he d uh, he's a little bit skeptical about this and he doesn't really exactly want to do it but yeah, as time goes on, he he gets a little bit more. He just wants to. He will. He's gonna do it. Yeah, he's gonna do it. And with this, he calls, and he's told to a uh, location. And he, but uh, first, like, and then a car pulls up. Uh, he's, but he, he's not that, he's a bit skeptical of it, and uh, when he sees everyone's asleep, but then, no gas goes in, he's, a, he goes to, he's put to sleep, and this is where the action starts, and yeah, it, this is definitely where it gets good, so yeah, it's, <laughs> he wakes up in a room, and there's, a number on his chest. His identity has been stripped away from him. And uh, his number is 456. Just for clarification. And he sees a lot of other people. And also, the f number 456 means uh, 455 others. And uh, it seems like they've been kidnapped. 100%. That nerve gas, the white underscript ban, people in masks, and so they don't know what is going on. There's just a lot of people in this room. They're all wearing the same jackets, though. We're all with numbers. But yeah, he tries to socialize a little bit. For him, they do a little bit of stuff. Like he talks to an old man who will become a prominent character later in the series, and. Yeah, they do a little bit of talking, but then people will put these cool, these people with pink masks just start walking in, and 
but some of them, which I noticed, uh, is like I instantly noticed there was a rank structure, and the high highest, uh, well, I, well, like the highest masked people. Well, there's the overlord pe person with the black mask, and there is a square, and well, I forgot VIPs, which I mentioned earlier. They aren't that well scripted. You know, they aren't that good actors when people have brought that up multiple times. But, yeah. They are. There's a little bit of a rank structure, and you first meet these guys with one person who is clearly the leader in a square mask. Um, then there are triangle masks, and other circle masks, which are the workers who, who can't talk. Uh, and I think there's more workers than actual people. So, yeah, there's no chance that you guys are going to revolt. And they talk, they've they all got guns. So, they uh, tell them about get these six games, which they got to play. And they uh, make them sen sign a consent form. But, yeah, they've already done a lot of illegal stuff. Uh, I saw, I when I watched this part with the consent, I was like, what? You, you kidnapped them, but... You, uh, so the consent form is purely like, I'm guessing it's just giving them like the sense of security and sense of choice so that like they're not going to be too afraid. Uh, so yeah, I, I, it's clearly shown that like they don't need that consensus form for them. They're just doing it like a little bit of trolling, you know what I mean? But yeah, that's what that's one of the things I noticed. But yeah, they make them sign a consent form. They do like all of this stuff there. They take them pictures, taken into an iconic room where like it's just a ton of stuff. If you've played any of the Roblox games where like they've done, some of them are good. Some of a lot of them, not so much. There's a lot of really bad stuff going on there. Like not. Like, just bad games. But, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of bad games going on. Just, in the horrible. Just horrible knockoffs. But, yeah. Some of them, good, you know. Others, bad. That's what I've noticed. But, some of them, one of them, who makes use of this room, actually made a game off of it. It's a game mode called Blood Rising, where you gotta navigate through it. I can't really... I'm not gonna really go through any of that stuff, but yeah, like, it's just a lot, it's just a game mode, but yeah, it's, uh, you gotta get through it, but this is, it's an iconic room, uh, like in the net nowadays, because, like, everybody is making stuff about Squid Game, because everybody likes it, so I'm sure any of you watching probably watch it too, so yeah, it's good, and that's what I'm trying to say. But, like, they go through this thing where, like, it's kind of like calibration, where they get all pictures of them. And then they light up on squares, which will obviously disappear if they die. So, uh, so like, what happens next is they got brought to the first game. They still don't exactly know what's happening. And, like, they just go into it blindly expecting money. Because that's what was promised to them. But, obviously, they're not gonna be able to get much money from what, where they're going. Well, unless they're the lucky one guy to win. But, yeah, they do not actually expect any uh, funny business, such as death or anything like that, to happen yet. They are completely blind to anything. They're not sure what's going on or anything, but... They do know that there's going to be money. But yeah, they have not been told the exact amount yet. They said that they are going to be the... Well, the guards mentioned that they'll tell them the amount that they'll be getting after... Uh, after the actual thing is made. Like, well, the first game. And yeah, they're all like, mate, whoop de doo uh, let's, let's have fun playing Red Light, Green Light. But... Yeah, they don't know is 
<laughs> if they fail, GG, but uh, you're dead. Get no scoped. Because a sniper will shoot you down if you are you caught moving by the doll. Which, yeah, is in the thumbnail. Uh, if you're caught by the doll moving after she says red light, well, you are dead. There's no more chance of you being alive any longer. You're just, it's just GG. Yeah, get, get deaded, you know? And, yeah. They're dead. They get deaded. So, uh, after they realize it, uh, everyone gets thrown into a panic. And, as you can tell by a panic, every means a lot of people are gonna get shot. Because they are moving after red light, green light. And red light, green light. And it's a red light, so... Yeah. Since everybody's trying to run to the exit, yeah, they're all dead. And, yeah. As I, f uh, I forgot to mention that he does meet his ch one of his childhood friends and they decide to team up. But, yeah, he isn't gonna be a very good teammate. He eventually later screws up. And by screw up, I mean completely betray everybody. You know, just the average teammate. So, what hap- what he- by what happens is, yeah, everyone panics and this means everybody's getting shot. This causes a little bit of a chain reaction to the people who don't actually want to move and are trying to stay alive because they're getting pushed out of the way from the people that are panicking and running for the exit where which yeah th that's a bit futile because if you could just be let out then uh, i don't see any danger in the game be well actually one of the rules is if the majority of players vote to get out of the game then you actually can but yeah, at the moment, yeah, you're in a game at the moment, and you can't leave. So yeah, you're screwed right now. But everybody is a bit scared. They're running for either running for the exit or shocked, scared. They're all, like frozen in fear. This is bad for Giyong who happens to be frozen in fear, because <laughs> he's either going to get pushed, or he's going to just run. Which he actually does get pushed, and almost dies. He is, at the moment, just running a kind of style under the body. But they do eventually make it, he does eventually make it through, almost falling over, but then getting picked up by his friend, well, not friend yet, but friend later, uh, called Ali. Uh, well, he's not picked up, he's held right before he's falling over. And yeah, that's good, because it was red light then. So, he was going to die. Ali just saved his life. And that's very nice. You just got your life saved. Very poggers. So, yeah, what happens next is they all get back into the room. Yeah, and then just, uh, it's pretty simple. They just all want to leave, and then they start begging, but then Song Wu, um, Giant's childhood friend, remembers clause 3 of the rules. If the majority votes to leave, then they can. And that, that part, like, basically just brings them up to start the vote. And despite it being close, uh, 101 people voted to leave. While the other 100 did not. And a lot of people did die. So, yeah. They are brought back to the house. And despite what you'd think, that is not the end of their journey. In fact, that's only the beginning. So what they ha what happens next is it's just basically a day where he's trying to recuperate 
and like just try and process what just happened and like they soon realized that what the life they were trying to get back to after that, uh, that after that freak thing yeah it's a bit worse than they remembered they don't remember all of these horrible things like debt collectors living horribly with no money and uh, yeah they want to get that 45.6 billion dollar thing so which well in fact translates to 50 million dollars around that in usd or uh, i mean odd you know australian dollars yeah they having realized that they are their old life pretty bad they do want to return and when they get that chance almost every single one do does almost like barely any of these guys wanted to stay back i think the number was around 20 uh, well maybe 15 that chose to like stay with their old life and look good for them because uh, they had pretty low chances because yeah there's only going to be one winner and despite everyone thinking yeah maybe i can uh, let's form teams so uh, that we can like all get home yeah the only one of them is getting home in the end and that one let's go Gion. hopefully you Songwoo, you can suck my among us i don't know yeah so uh, so like Songwoo, uh he's gonna be the antagonist yeah uh he's not portrayed that way exactly in the start the antagonist is squid game but in my eyes song woo screw you oh uh, yeah song woo he's our evil guy but for the moment ever he, he is basically just Gion's idol he everyone in his family believe song woo so smart because he went to this college and that well that was only for really smart people and yeah good good on him but he's honestly just a jerk and he was in a ton of debt while portraying himself as some rich guy but yeah he's not he had but he had barely any money and yeah so he's not he's gonna be a cutthroat businessman and yeah that's what you'd expect from him there's business college it makes you a bit cutthroat so yeah they form a team ali uh ali him and the old man well yeah the team they're gonna be good and he wants the female pickpocket to join so yeah he asks her but she says nobody can be trusted and that's actually a fair point because in a death game uh, uh you don't really you can't really expect everybody to go put you their, your interests in front of theirs but where she screws up a little is the point where like she isn't joining the team she can believe that uh, she can like not trust anybody but not joining a team stupid move buddy like you you're in a death game remember like it has you still you can't really trust them but you gotta like team with people because without friends how far are you gonna get in this death game because yeah but yeah you know it's got it's gonna be a bit deadly you gotta get the friends and how can you trust everybody not to attack you in the night which is a figure that happens later in the story this like having people attack you in the night bad and that the next game like since they're not going to be leaving anytime soon from the game anymore since they've already had that chance uh well they still could technically do the majority but yeah you're probably not gonna since you just returned from like you just return to it knowing that uh, it's a death game now it's uh, now yeah now that you know it's a death game and you still return to it yeah i don't think anybody's going to be doing that oh 
yeah, a little bit of glitch. Ah, and yeah. Oh yeah, I'm very trusty. Uh, no, I'm gonna cut your, I'm gonna cut your throat in the night. But yeah, now let's get on to the second game. So the second game happens, you know, it is called Sugar Honey Honeycomb, I believe. And the aim of the game is to remove a shape out of a honeycomb without breaking it. And the like, what makes this game so difficult is in honeycomb. In the honeycomb used, um, there is a like there's a lot of stuff in it like that makes it unpredictable and hard to predict where like the cracks are going to occur and like where it's going to break apart and you meant to since you're meant to not break it you have to just like you just gotta be get it uh, and uh, there's a lot of strategy involved and uh um, the hardest shape to do is the umbrella because of how many sharp cuts are. But Gion obviously chooses this because um, his friend, his friend Song Wu, who decides to betray him because he does figure out how to actually do the um, game and exactly what the game was. So yeah, he figures out the game and decides. Nah, mate, I ain't going to tell anybody. I don't want to tell you how to do the game. Screw you, Gion. So he tells Avu to split up. He, well, he does actually hesitate a little bit when Gion does pick the hardest part, the hardest thing to do, which would basically guarantee his death, but uh, he does not bring up the charade that he's going to, like, that he uh, knows what the game is. And, yeah, basically screws over Gion. And the reason it's so difficult is because Umbrella, which was the shape he chose, that caused him is the hardest since, like, there's the most sharp cuts. This means, well, you know, he gotta... He's basically just gotta cut out an Umbrella from a thing where sharp cuts screw it over and... Basically, uh, it's completely unpredictable. The other shapes were circles and triangles and a star, which all are completely really easy compared to a umbrella. And yeah, you, but duh, but like I, uh, this is a really suspenseful, suspenseful moment that in the series because like he is basically guaranteed death. But does he die? No! The reason for this, he has a large big brain moment, and he decides, yes, I am going to start licking this to thin it out, so that instead of cutting it out, I can just lick it, and then it will just fuck come out on its own. And yeah, it works. And he ended up saving a lot of other people from death too, because they followed in his footsteps. Uh, while well, licking the honeycomb to thin it, which dissolved the outside. And honestly, very big brain moment. I was holding my breath the entire time. It was suspenseful as hell, because I was scared. No, he might die. But, uh, of course, he's got that plot armor, boys. But yeah, the next game, well, uh, after the, uh, the next game would be Hug of War. But before we get to that, we gotta discuss something else. The thing that I need to go over is that in between um, the second and the third game, where someone is killed, and thinking they all have avoided doing this until then, because they didn't know it wasn't against the rules. And after this, that everyone is scared because they now they can they now know that well there's a few big jokes uh, that will kill without mercy and they now know they can kill all they want to thin out the competition so as soon as lights are off there is a massive riot that emerges and a lot of people are killed doing this 
earn the well our team of people they are they do make it out fine but they do not know where the old guy is and what happens is that he like begs everybody to stop and then everything is stopped you know because people start coming shooting everything and this causes you know since everybody just got like but they, everybody's gotten shot and everything. Nobody sleeps at all. They're all scared. Being scared means no sleep. And no sleep, less performance on the games. And this can basically mean a death sentence for future games. Because you gotta be aware of your, everything around you. To be able to complete these games. Because they are really demanding. You know. Uh, they gotta, you gotta be a big brain to be able to do these games. Since, like, there's some stuff, you know, that you might be outmatched physically, but mentally, you can do everything. You can do beat them. Depend like, if there's a challenge, uh, you gotta fight someone else. Or just fight to survive. So, yeah. Or, uh, well, or if you're just, like, playing the odds, such as the second challenge. But now we get into the third game, which is Tug of War. I mentioned this earlier. And yeah, Tug of War, uh, sit with the current team, you know, it's not, they don't have, well, they have to get into teams of 10, I forgot to mention that. But yeah, with the current team, uh, they're pretty weak. They've got an old guy, and the woman actually teams, the woman pickpocket teams up with them. And yeah. This, uh, like, they're a bit outmatched rather on from the male teams, who are all big boys, big strong, and if you get to a drift. I don't know what I meant by that. Like, I, I had no meaning in my head when I said that. But yeah, so they're all stronger, and they have to go get some more people, because you need teams of 10. And they do, but, you know, they don't get many men. Which, because that's what they want, since, like, well, they don't actually know, but they think it might be a physical challenge, because it's a team challenge, where they fight other people. Well, they don't know that yet, but, like, they have, it's a team challenge. So, like, they get, they, they want to get a lot of men, and uh, so they exclude old guys, girls, you know, because they don't want to, like, be at a disadvantage. But, Gion, he's not like that. He accepted all of the females. Well, he want, he want, well he was sort of like that. But he would accept a female. He want, would get the female. Well, yeah. They had two females and one old guy. So, that put them at a disadvantage when they were... If they were going to be fighting uh, the bigger, stronger teams. So, yeah. Once they go in, they figure out it's tug of what They do a ton of... Uh, the, a few people do it, their challenge before them, but then after they get in, um, during the elevator ride, the old man tells them strategy. And uh, yeah, the strategy gonna work. They think it's gonna work, and uh, they use it. But to their dismay, since it's an all team, all male team that they're going up against, uh, they're a bit discouraged. So, like, they get screwed, you know, they're screwed, so, like, they, because they regain their footing, and this causes them to almost lose, but then Song Wu, who actually has a big brain moment, and he decides to, like, do what everybody does to annoy other people in school, to start, like, when someone's pulling on something, just take a few steps forward, and then well, they just get Part, they just tumble to the ground and this works because they fall and then they're able to pull push well like pull them off and win the tug of war game and then yeah they get brought back there's another night uh not that as bad as the night before but they're still all trying to like survive and yeah you know it's all it's all fun and games until people are dying but yeah, they are just all, like, 
they're just so going through. And now we're, that brings us to the fourth game. The fourth game was a... Let me get this right. It was... Marbles. That was the game. So, the Marble game was... They paired up thinking... Well, they kept pairing up into twos. Thinking, yeah, let's be friends. Let's get through this together. But then they realized the partner is the person they're playing against. And you gotta take all of your the marbles from your opponent, who is your partner, and that's the only way to win. So you need to get 20 marbles. And yeah, the partner that Gion chose was the old man, because he wanted to be nice. But then, yeah, he starts having, he starts like going to hell. He gets everyone like, you know, so, uh, this is, but yeah, uh, sorry I'm being a bit, like, bad at talking, but like, this is where saying, be, saying, saying what, like, actually shows his true colors, you know, as a conniving bastard, because he paired up with Ali. And this might not seem that bad at first, but, um, the way he defeated Ali was just mean. Uh, it's, he didn't. He was losing to Ali in the first place, but then he just decided, nah, I'm gonna be a big brain and just take his marbles. Like, he, you couldn't take them physically, but you could outsmart the person into giving you your marbles. And he, that's what exactly what he did. He made Ali trust him into thinking, M man, we can both get out of this alive. Which, he, that's exactly what he thought. And then he realized, no, he tricked me. And yeah, he did die. And then Gion makes it through, but only after like a while of just nonsense going on with the Grand oh, who I'm gonna call him that, 001. And yeah, that just goes on for a while. And then the. There's only 16 players left. And yeah, the next game, which is the fifth one, um, is the, well, like, bridging. Like, you know, god bridging. <laughs> like, it's a glass bridge, and it's basically just almost pure luck. And this causes them to be a bit scared, because they have to, well, Gion almost chose number one, which is in uh, foresight that's the worst one but uh, this guy actually took just took it from him and yeah that was his luckiest moment so yeah they take different uh, they take turns going through and there's eventually it's only the four guys well um, well female too um the the pickpocket song Wu, and this glass ma glass maker who um, that just, like, he could have been helping them, but nah, he's not gonna, he wants to get rid of the competition. Because, because he can tell the difference between tempered glass and normal glass by the sound and other things, like, seeing it. Um, but they tried to halt him, but then he could still see it, but then, goddamn Songwoo killed the guy to get through the last thing. And then, next... Everything, all of the glass explode and wounded the girl and everybody, but girl more significantly, and yeah. Uh, so, the girl being wounded, so yeah, <laughs> why am I saying this over and over again? But yeah, the girl got wounded, he, she was going to bleed out, but they wanted, they could have like voted, got out, voted, voted to go out majority. And that's what Songwoo feared. So as um, Eon was trying to get some help for the girl, um, Songwoo decided, I'm going to make another bastard move. And he slit the girl's neck. And so the sixth game begins. The sixth game, which was heavily foreshadowed to be Squid Game, is in fact Squid Game, where two players well, there's a te two teams of players, offensive and defensive, and the offensive team have to make it across a line and towards the other side 
where they have to get through this small clip area, area. And the defensive team has to stop them by pushing them outside of the squid head. Well, not actual squid head, but like, sort of shaped like a squid. But like, yeah, you gotta get through. And then, they, <laughs> they just duel it out. You can do any physical activity, like push each other, punch each other, grab each other. And it doesn't matter, because uh, there's barely any rules. And this is exactly what made Squid Game the most dangerous, like one of the most bad da games. Because you could stab each other, they got steak knives. And yeah, Song Wu was the defensive and uh, Gion was the offensive. So yeah, they kept stabbing each other with steak knives, all of that stuff. And it was just a lot of stabbing. Uh, but eventually Gion defeats Song Wu. And yeah, he defeated. And then gets that 45.6 billion jackpot. So, yeah, he gets away with it, but, like, after he leaves, he doesn't spend any of it. He just, like, he just doesn't want to spend it. He's, but it's kind of like the story called The Walk, and by Stephen Hawking, where this guy goes, he wins the, the challenge, but he goes crazy doing it. Well, not, he, Gion, it's not his case with Gion, but eventually he gets happy. Like, Gion. I'm not talking about the walk anymore. But, yeah. Like, eventually he gets happy, sort of happy again. He's going to visit his daughter. But then he... This... Uh, this sort of shadows a second season. Because he sees a guy... Um... Slapping someone. And... And it's the same guy that was slapping him. And the original that was bringing people in for the squid game. So... He tries to stop him, incredibly angered. And, yeah... He, he's got that, well, I forgot to mention, he got that sick hairdo. But yeah, he went, tries to stop him, but he, yeah, he can't do much. Yeah, uh, because he ran away. And then he does, takes his card, uh, calls him, and then he's gonna come back. He's going back after, like, them trying to tell him not to. Just take the money, go, get on the plane, visit your daughter. But no, he's not gonna do that. But yeah, the, so that's basically the end of the first season. And I know I say it, I talk badly. I kind of suck at talking, you know what I mean? I'm pretty, you know. But yeah, I kind of suck. Uh, I suck at fuck all everything. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I really loved Squid Game. You guys need to check it out if you guys haven't already. Because it was such a great show. And uh, I kind of opus oversimplified it a bit. But, and if I made it sound a bit bad, don't get discouraged. Yeah, still watch it. It's really good. <laughs> and yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I might make more like of this if, like, you know. Because I am enjoying doing stuff like this. But yeah. We'll just have to get in my groove. But yeah, I also enjoy gaming, so we just we'll just experiment a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Bye bye.